All right, guys, welcome to the much-anticipated, much-talked-about notes on 8-4. Um, 8-4 is rational expressions, and we're going to work on simplifying them, so adding, subtracting, and then also multiplying and dividing. Um, this, it, we talked about, this is going to be some of the toughest algebra we've probably ever done, um, which is good. Uh, bends our brains. So, um, first of all, understanding that what a rational expression is, and, uh, you know, little things like, like this, and we've, we've talked about some of this stuff earlier in the year, how we can separate things, you know, 1 plus 1 over x is equivalent to x plus 1 over x. Um, the, a rational expression is the quotient of two polynomials, we know that, we've been graphing them. Big deal stuff is right here. We're going to look for them in simplest form, okay? A rational expression is in simplest form when its numerator and denominator are polynomials that have no common divisors, okay? So this, for example that is in simplest form, okay? This, yikes, uh, this second one, this is in simplest form, okay? Because there's there's not any more that we can do. Um, whereas not simplest form, these over here, if we take a look, you know, this can be simplified. This, here's a common factor. And these, when you factor them, you would find that there's a common factor there as well. So lots of factoring involved here. Um, we, we simplify these, again, by just dividing, um, you know, right here, we notice that this right here, um, we can factor. The restriction is not evident from the simplified, so we have to make sure we include the restriction here. We've talked about that before when we did uh, composite function. We, we talked about an 8-3, um, so that's not, that's not something new. So, simplifying a rational expression, what is uh, this in simplest form, and then state any restrictions? So... Uh, we factor top and bottom, we divide out common factors, we're left with just this, and the restrictions are that x can't be equal to 5 or negative 2. Um, we need to have them both, even though in the simplified form, negative 2 would work, in the original it would not. Right? Go ahead and take a second, pause the video here, and simplify um, a, b, and c for me, and make sure you state any restrictions. Go ahead and do that now. All right. A simplified is negative 4 over uh, negative 4x over y uh, x uh, can't be 0 and neither can y uh, for b it is x plus 4 over x minus 3 okay and x can't be 2 or 3 and this one is negative 4 over x plus 3 and x cannot be equal to plus or minus 3. If you listed that as x can't be equal to 3, and negative 3, that's the same thing. Right? Um, you can use what you know about simplifying rational expressions when you multiply and divide them. So here, we have two rational expressions that we are going to multiply. Um, if I multiply this quadratic times this quadratic, and this linear times this quadratic, I'm going to make a mess. Uh, I don't want to make a mess. What I want to do is I want to simplify first. Okay, so what we do is, is we factor the top, factor the top, factor the bottom. And then when we're left with this, we could almost put this all over one big fracture bar because these are all being multiplied. And then I can start simplifying anything that matches up. So the threes are gone, we see that. The minus fives are gone. So then all we're left with is this and this. And that's the answer. I make, I make sure I go back and I check for my restrictions that it can't be negative three, negative one, or positive five. And that's that. So, and again, you, you want to you you clean it up and factor it before you make a mess of it. That's the big key. So, go ahead and take a second. Try got it number two. All right, you have unpaused. Hopefully, for got it number two, you have two times x plus one over x plus four squared. Okay? And then x cannot be equal to one negative 1 and negative 4. If you didn't get that, uh, go back and try it again. If yours looks a little bit different than mine, put a star next to it and we'll talk about whether or not it's okay. Um, and if you did get it, hey, look at you. Um, to divide, there's just simply one extra step. We have to remember that if I have 1 fourth divided by 1 third, that's the same as 1 fourth times 3 over 1. We multiply by the reciprocal. So that's all we do here. We, we we multiply and we flip this and then everything after that is the exact same okay um, 
We want to make sure that we talk about uh, rewriting the, the main factors, identifying the restrictions from the denominator of the simplified expression and from any other denominator used. That's, a, that's also a difference. Sorry. So let me make sure we explain that. The denominators here are uh, x plus 1, x plus 5, and x minus 2. So uh, I've got to account for all of them. All right. Um, so x can't be equal to negative 1, negative 5, or 2. But I also have to account for this denominator before I flipped it. And that's where this 1 comes into play. If this were a 1, that would make this denominator 0, and then I'd be dividing by an undefined number. So I've got to account for every denominator used in the entire problem. Okay. So this is a good one. Uh, go ahead and give it a give a give got it three a try. Pause the video right here and give that a try. All right, you're back. Hopefully, what you got for three a is two x over x minus one, and that x cannot be equal to one, negative one, negative four, or three. All right. Um, and then got it B asked you, without doing the calc calc calculation, what's the greatest number of restrictions the quotient here could have and explain? And the answer to 3B, uh, if you didn't try it, pause the video right now. Quick pause. Um, and try and at least come up with a guess. Uh, if you did try it, hopefully, uh, and you're on pause now, you're back, uh, 6. And here's how. Here's how. If, and it's the greatest number. So just by ballparking it, by looking at it, this has two factors, this has two factors, and this has two factors. This is a denominator now. This is a denominator now. And when we flip the fraction, this is going to be a denominator. So that's 2, 4, and then 6. All right? Easy enough. Let's take a look at what's next. Um, so then using rational expressions to solve a problem, uh, here we're given a, a community building a park. And we want a, a fence uh, to fence in a space to play it for toddlers. The maximum area for a given amount of fencing, which shape, a circle or a square, provides a more efficient use of fencing. So here's the squares area, the circles area. Um, we take a look at the ratio to see which one is better. Um, and then we, we end up simplifying. And we have, you know, we're, all we're doing is relating area to perimeter and then area to perimeter. Um, and then we just we see which one is greater uh, since the greater area is uh, the circle um, that provides for more efficient use of the fence. No problem. Uh, which shape of play space provides a more efficient use of fencing, a square or an equilateral triangle? The area of an equilateral triangle in terms of one side is one half times that side times the square root of three over two, which you might recognize from special right triangles from geometry. Um, but that's the formula for that area. The perimeter of an equilateral triangle is, of course, 3s. So you're going to relate those two and come up with an answer there for got it number four. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can tell me which one would be uh, the most efficient use of fencing. Go ahead and do that now. Okay, you're back. Hopefully, at the very least, you know, if you just put in some numbers and and try and figure it out, like they did here, you know, if we assume the perimeter is 40, the area of the circle is this, and you could figure it out, the area of the square is that, so the circle is better. So hopefully, if, if you couldn't do what we're doing, you could at least come up with a guess based on, like, well, what if it's this? Put in a number and see what happens. Um, hopefully, for this one, you got the square. Okay? That's it for the notes. Uh, come with questions uh, or come ready to practice. This stuff isn't easy. All right, see you next time.